All right, welcome to geometry uh, 8-2. We're studying chords and circles. We got a big unit, so uh, let's go through this. First, a chord is, um, I'm going to pick a new color here, a segment whose endpoints are on a circle. Simple enough. You can see the example below. Uh, let me use a different color for that. Uh, a chord is a line segment, and where its endpoints, you can see, are on a circle. So that's it. So here's a chord. So any line segment that you see inside a circle where its endpoints end on the circle is a chord. Let's move on. All right. Theorem 12.4. We have a lot of theorems today, so let's keep these simple. Uh, within a circle... Uh, and when they say this, because this is going to come up in all of them, or in congruent circles, all this means is this would be true for this circle, and if the exact same circle existed, a congruent one, right, circle, then the angles would also correspond and it would work as well. But within a circle, congruent central angles, okay, so central angles uh, are, would be here, right, see so central angles would be here, have congruent, and let me write this in, arcs, that's what we're looking for. So if you have, uh, I'll use a different color again. These are central angles because they're starting from the origin here. If this angle is equal to this angle, then guess what? This arc is going to be the same as this arc. So this theorem says that if you have congruent central angles, if these two are the same angles, then their arcs are also going to be the same. Arc AB is going to be the same as CD. Let's move on. Theorem 12.5. This says, within a circle, congruent central angles have congruent chords. So not only do they have congruent arcs, which we looked at last time, you know, this, this arc would be the same, arc AB would be the same as arc CD, but the lengths of their chords, so right here, this chord AB and chord CD will also be the equal uh, length. So again, if you have congruent central angles, both their arcs and their chords will be the same. Let's move on. Kind of last but not least here for this section. Um, within a circle, congruent chords, so that means that if these chords are the same length, they have congruent arcs, meaning arc AB will be the same as arc CD. Kind of makes sense, right? So if you have the same length of chords, their arcs are also going to be the same. Let's move on. So problem number one here, it says uh, you have circle, this is the, the symbol for circle. So circle O, right here, is congruent to circle P, here. Given that BC is congruent to DF, what can we conclude? Uh, well, we conclude a few things based off what we learned. So if BC is the same, guess what? It also means that their central, their central angles are the same. So the measure of angle O is also going to be congruent to the measure of angle P. It's going to be the same as this because their arcs are the same. I'm sorry, because their chords are the same. And then, to say I'll use a different color for that, their arcs are going to be the same. So arc BC is going to be the same as arc DF. So BC, and here's how you write the notation, arc, right? Just a curve over it going to be congruent to arc df. And that's what we could tell from that, based off those theories that we learned before. All right, continuing along. Theorem 12.7. Within a circle, chords, and I actually forgot a word here. It should say chords are... Excuse me, I did not forget a word. Within a circle, chords equidistant. I should just say equidistant from the centers are congruent. So if we have chords that are have the same distance to the center, just to the center origin here, right? So if the chords, if they're the same distance from the center, then the chords are going to be congruent themselves, meaning the length of, of EB is going to be the length, the same length as CD. Let's use that knowledge now, right? So this says, what is the length, what is the length of segment RS in circle O? So RS is here, so how do we find this, right? Well, this is pretty simple. We could see here 
that since this is 9 and this is 9, right, that means these two chords are equidistant from the center, meaning that this is going to be the same length as this. Well, these PQ is the same distance as QR, so we know then that also QR is going to be 12.5, and that the total distance here is going to be 25, PR, PR is 25. And since these two chords are equidistant from the center, SR is also going to be 25. Simple as that. Let's move on. Theorem 12.8. This says that if segment AB is a diameter and AB is perpendicular to another chord CD, then CE is congruent to ED and CA is congruent to arc. Arc CA is congruent to arc AD. So let's look at this. So if AB, okay, is a diameter. So you can see this passes through the origin. This is the diameter of a circle. So if a chord comes in, right, at, and it's perpendicular, meaning it forms a right angle here, right? Then what we know then is that A, these two segments are going to be congruent to each other. So CE is going to be congruent to DE. So you can see these two are equal. And also arc CA is also going to be congruent to arc AD. So if you have a diameter um, and a chord hits it, it's perpendicular to it, it's going to break up these segments into equal parts, and also these arcs are going to be equal to each other. Theorem 12.9. Uh, so let's just let's talk about it here. I'm going to read through this, but then reference it here. So if AB is a diameter again, and you have C... Oh, I didn't label E here. It should be CE. And CE is, the, is um, congruent to ED, then AB and CD are perpendicular to each other. It's kind of the converse of what we just learned. Lastly is Theorem 12.10. And this says that if AB is the perpendicular bisector of chord CD, meaning that this is going to bisect this chord into two equal parts. So C, uh, let me just label another point here again. Let's call this E on both sides. So if, if AB is bisecting chord, uh, chord CD here, so it's the two parts are going to be equal, then... AB contains the center, O. So then you can see that it contains the O. These are all very much related. Your book has more information on page 774 if you want to explore them more. Okay, problem four. What is the value of each variable to the nearest tenth? So what we're looking at is, is in circle K, uh, we see that this is forming... Um, it's perpendicular to this chord LM. And since it's perpendicular, we know that it's going to bisect it. So meaning each side is going to be 7. So this is going to be 7 from here to here, and this is going to be 7 from here to here. So the total is 14. So now that we know that, we know that LN, and LN is just this middle section here, right, uh, on this triangle, LN is 7. So now we have a triangle with 7, 3, and r, and we could use Pythagoras' theorem to solve for this. So r squared is going to equal 3 squared plus 7 squared, and uh, if you continue, r squared would equal 9 plus 49, r squared equals 58, and the square root, you're going to get roughly, um, I'll make it like this, approximately 7.6. All right, that's the section. hope that uh, that's easy to understand, and I'll talk to you next time.